Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're in the Bear Root Nation tropical and exotic garden of um, my friend here, Kevin Chang, who I met about a year and a month ago um, today. And um, pleasure to finally meet you and see you. I know we've been chatting a lot on Instagram and, um, and Facebook and YouTube. And um, tell us a little bit about you and your business and what you've got going on here. All right, so my name's Kevin, and we're here at Bear Root Nation, uh, where we grow exotic and rare fruits. So the premise of what we do is we try to find fruits and plants that you typically wouldn't be able to find in your local nursery. That's great. I know you gave me the tour before we started, and I know there's a lot of awesome stuff that I want to um, share with the viewers, which um, we'll do a tour in the upcoming video to this. Um, what I want to specifically share with those watching is we just did our um, fig tree cutting giveaway. And, but Kevin was so gracious in sharing the cuttings off of his green Kadota fig tree. And so um, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to be pruning this fig tree and we're going to be talking about the benefits of successfully pruning your fig every single year. And the best time for accomplishing that is right now if you live in Southern California as our chance of frost has passed at that last week of January. Here we are now the first week of February um, and the plant will begin to be pushing out new shoots and new growth and even um, that initial crop of figs and we got to accomplish all that before any of that happens which is going to be happening in the upcoming few weeks. So this is an excellent time to be pruning those plants in your garden we're going to be doing that together. Um, but before we do I know you've got a can of the Ivory Organics in your hands and I noticed with your early on post on Instagram if you can share with customers how have you used Ivory Organics within your garden? All right, so yeah, I actually stumbled across this just looking for things so I can protect my plants at all costs, you know. So I bought it, got it on Amazon, and thought I'd give it a try. I planted it, I planted it, I painted it on about 50 or 60 of my trees at the time to give it a test run. And as you can see on our fig here, it's worked wonders. It protected it from sunburn, all the rodents, all the bugs, because it comes with a bunch of uh, oils in it and it's really nice and safe and it made my trees look nice because I got the green version when it comes in white, brown, or green. And I thought the green would just blend in with my trees a little bit. That's great, thanks. <laughs> I noticed with your Instagram post, you mentioned how you used it a lot on your um, fig as we're here in front of your figs and also your mangoes that you've, um, that you've seen a lot of great results with your, 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 yeah, your so, mango growing. Yeah, not only with the figs, I did it on my mangoes, I also did it on avocados because they're kind of similar and with the ones that I didn't, paint are almost half of the size now as the ones that I did paint. Oh, and that's great. They are looking beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, let's get started on pruning the fig. All right. So here we are. Um, to begin with the pruning, I've got with me my pr my pruners. I made sure that they're sharp and, um, and ready for the job. And then I've also got my handsaw. This is all I'm going to need. And then towards the end of this, once we prune in, we've got all this exposed wood. We'll then apply the ivory organics to seal it to basically prevent any beetles and borers from entering those exposed wood areas. And I'll repeat that towards the end of this um, lesson. The first thing, and I'm glad I've got Kevin here next to me, is to make sure I've got his permission as I cut away with, um, with this fig tree. I wanna make sure that I've got his permission, but I wanna to explain to all of you the benefits of also pruning your figs. The first thing I wanna share with you is, if you come in a little closer, um, you can actually see that there's already some figs that are developing on this dormant wood. As you can see from last year, right at the tip of my finger, and I'll even go here with my, with my pruners to use the tip of it, right here was where the leaf scar was from last year. So a few months ago, there was a leaf that was once attached at this point. Right above it is right there, there is the node where a future branch could, poten could potentially come out. And right next to that um, leaf node is the um, fruit. And right there is a, is a, is a little baby um, starting baby fig. So if by keeping some of the old wood on your fig tree, you'll be able to capitalize and benefit off of the breba crop, which is your first crop of figs. So it's important to consider keeping some wood, but when pruning your fig, and this applies to most varieties of figs, there's a lot of gain by pruning your fig anywhere from 50 to as much as 70% down and back because what's going to happen after your breba crop is you're going to keep some old wood as much as as we discussed 30 to 50 percent of the old wood will stay 
with all of that new growth you're gonna get because now you've increased the vigor because we've removed all of that extra wood from the height, the roots are now still strong enough to support this entire structure, but by shortening it, it's gonna put all of that extra strength into creating more branches, and at every single node along the new branches will be the main and the sweetest and the most delicious crop of figs. So for those of you out there that don't prune your figs, you'll notice every year it might be just growing a matter of inches and producing fruit along only those inches of new growth. But by pruning it back, again, by that 30 to 70% rule, you'll be able to capitalize on all of that new growth and typically every single leaf node will generate, aside from just another leaf, another fruit will be in there. So hopefully we'll revisit this garden come spring and summer and we'll get to see all of the fruit just as we explained it today. So we're gonna start back by pruning it. I wanna share like the structure of this. Um, um, Kevin, if you wanna explain what is going on here? Like what, like explain, like I see all these branches and I know um, a lot of, uh, of our customers have also sent me pictures of their figs where there's just a lot of branches coming out like from the ground so if you can kind of explain like where did it start which one is the parent plant and where do these suckers you know originate from all right so yeah as you can see in this little s section right here this is the original mother plant and last uh, spring we cut it back a couple branches and a, a sucker came out the side as you can see right here by the thick stalk and this stock actually produced way better fruit and way more abundance of fruit than this original stock because it wasn't cut back enough. So uh, I know we discussed this before we started recording, but the, the new growth, the stronger, more vigorous branches of the fig, um, which have come out after the original parent plant, which, which is right here, all of which are genetically identical because I can see they're all connected here at the base. And we've also discussed the fact that this particular fig variety was never grafted, as most figs are typically not grafted, um, unlike citrus and other fruit and nut trees, which are almost always grafted, um, figs are generally propagated by way of cutting. So um, with that being the case, and we also you know, discussed the fruit and the quality and the size and all that, between the parent plant and these suckers that have originated around it, they're all the same and they're all identical. So um, I got Kevin's permission to actually remove the original parent plant as this structure is growing inferior to the surrounding um, we'll call them suckers but they're not just suckers they're actually very highly productive quality um, new branches and we're going to focus on making that the future um, trunks and the future branches that will support figs for the many years and decades for Kevin and his family. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to remove the parent plant as low as we can go to the ground so I'm basically going with my handsaw right here and I'm being careful not to damage these other trunks that are in the area. So we're just gonna come in like so, and we're gonna go as low as we can to the base. So I'm being real careful here to not damage the other trunks that are around this one. And there it goes. You can see how smooth we've got it. The goal is eventually that this trunk over here in the back, this other trunk that's over here to my right, is going to eventually swell and grow over this area. There may be another sucker that's gonna come off from this side in the future and we may consider keeping it as well, but we've just removed the original parent branch. So I just basically went back with my saw one more time. I just want to share with you that I just removed this additional wood from the trunk. If you come in a little closer, I just want you to see how closely I brought that in. This wood used to be over here. The goal is, and I've seen a lot of um, a lot of landscapers, well, they'll sometimes like just prune randomly, and it'll create like these dead areas within the tree, which will be an entryway again for boars and termites as they're going to see this dead wood and then work their way into it. The goal is again by cutting it as close as you can to the living tissues. Here's one branch over here, another branch going up, is as they swell it'll eventually heal over this prune job that we did. And again we're going to coat this with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 to prevent any beetles and termites from entering it. Another thing I've noticed is um, Kevin had coated this entire plant about a year ago with the Ivory Organics. Um, as you can see with the color green, so that you might notice there's a little bit of greenish on the bark, but that was before 
all of these branches grew about another eight to 10 feet above my head from this point, which is when he last applied the ivory organics. And I think it was about a year ago, right? Yeah. So um, the other thing I wanna point out is if you come in a little closer, right where my finger is, you'll notice was the top of where he pruned and figs are notoriously have very thin and soft um, pith, which is the center of the um, branch. And you can see that this is a perfect entryway and I've seen ants colonize areas like that, termites, beetles, a whole bunch of insects can get in there. The goal is we're gonna come back with the ivory organics and we're gonna patch that as well um, towards the end of this video when we get to that um, part of it. And now let's work on basically bringing the height down. I'm hoping um, you can share like how tall it is. My reach is eight feet. So some of these branches are at least 10, maybe 11, 12 feet tall. Um, and the goal is we're gonna bring it down by 70%. All of the wood that we get, and this is proper annual pruning method is cut back from all of last year's growth, which is about eight feet of, you know, at least six to 10 feet of new growth on all of these branches, you're gonna cut them down by about 70% every year, no less than 50%. Um, and fortunately, Kevin is donating all of this, these cuttings, which um, last year's wood, like the wood that's usually typically one or two years of age, are best for accomplishing cuttings, more so than using wood that's three, four, and five years old. So this younger wood, even though it may be thicker near the bottom or thinner near the top, is the preferred wood to use. So we're gonna come down now by 70%. What I'm looking at, and I'm hoping the camera person wouldn't mind um, um, checking, you know, taking a look at what I'm doing, but I'm gonna prune it down to where I see there's a bud pointing away from the center of the tree. And the center is like right around where my hand is back here. So we're now out towards the edge. We've got this bud over here and we're gonna prune it at about a quarter of an inch above the bud and we're gonna leave a little more wood in front of the bud and less behind it so we're cutting at an angle like so and the reason for cutting at an angle is to make sure that if there's any moisture that it actually works its way off and prevents any mildew and mold um, from happening on the top and again you can see the white pith that's right here and if I touch it with my pruners you can actually you can always push it right in it's that soft material whereas the rest of it is woody and harder material than that center part. So again, another reason to be coating it once you're done with your pruning job. So we've just cut that back and what we're gonna do now is we're pretty much gonna repeat that process throughout. The other important lesson is we've got this branch which is growing again towards the middle of this vase structure. The goal is to always have an open, um, an open structure with your fruit trees and to make sure the branches are going out as a lot of the branches will eventually come off the branch and work their way towards the middle filling in the inner canopy, but you don't want the branches to get all tangled within the middle of the tree. So this branch is coming out all the way as close as I can to the trunk. So I'll be basically going with my handsaw and I'll be cutting this again. This will be a lot easier to do than that original cut. Um, I think if you come in from this angle, you'll be able to um, see it, or maybe you can come over my shoulder, wherever, whatever you prefer. But my point is you just want to see that I'm basically pruning as close as I can to the tree trunk. And we're going to go like this. What I'll do this as a mistake. What some landscapers will do is they'll just cut randomly like so. And if there are no buds off of this branch, then it'll basically end up with a knob of dead, um, you know, like a, a basically a dead branch that's gonna be hanging onto the tree trunk, which again is gonna result in more disease and more risk of pests entering the plant. What you need to do is cut as close as you can to the tree trunk like so. What'll happen now is that as, if we can scoot over, is that as the tree trunk now expands, it'll heal over this wound, which will take um, at least a year, possibly two to three years to eventually close and seal over as it's done in um, places such as here. I can see that there was once a, a wound that's healed over um, and trying to see if there's any other examples. But eventually like this wound over here that was created from about a year ago, this will heal in the next year or two. It takes that long for these larger exposed areas to heal over, which again, we're gonna protect and prevent disease and pests from entering with the Ivory Organics products. We'll pause. So I've also noticed that there was a um, supporting stake which was used upon the installation of the tree. Now that the tree is pretty much in its position, we're gonna remove the stake to the best of our ability to try to pull it back out of the ground. Oh. 
There it goes. <laughs> and next we're gonna bring the rest of the tree down to about the same height as this, bringing it all down to about 70%. Again, I'm keeping my eyes out on the buds and making sure that they're all pointed in a direction that's away from the center so that the branches don't regrow and tangle themselves toward the center of the tree. So I see that there's a bud on the outside and that's the bud I'm gonna select over this one that's you know, angled towards this branch. So this is the preferred branch. And again, we're cutting about a, a fourth of an inch above that bud. And now we've got some more wood. And we'll continue the process here. And the last one, we're looking for a bud going away from the center. And notice I'm not just randomly cutting in the middle of the nodes. I'm actually focusing on the nodes, looking at the buds, and cutting a quarter of an inch away from the bud. And that's it. The last thing that's caught my eye is we've got all of these younger, smaller sucker wood. And there's no reason for these to remain on the plant as these are less likely to support figs. And additionally, um, they're gonna be in the understory of this larger plant that's gonna be shading all of these leaves anyway. So the performance, even if it were to create figs, is gonna be inferior to what's gonna happen on these canes that we've just pruned. So we're gonna remove all of this sucker wood as well, like so. And that's it. That's Kevin's or Bear Ruth Nation's now pruned Kadota green fig tree. And what's gonna happen now is we've now increased the vigor of the plant. It's gonna perform way better. It's gonna create that much more wood for more giveaways that you can get through Bear Ruth Nation. Um, and I'll put all of those links to his Facebook account um, and his Instagram account, which is where we met initially and, um, and any other ways he wants um, us to reach out to him. So um, the last step that we're gonna do here is we're gonna coat the product now with this product over here, which I wanna share with you, which is the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection against damaging sunburn insects and rodents, and um, registered material for use in organic agriculture. We're gonna now use this to basically coat all of these exposed surfaces, and, um, and then the plant will be off to a great start. So thanks again, Kevin, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks again for sharing all of these cuttings that we'll be sharing with the Ivory Organics customers and, um, and looking forward to coming back here again. Um, for those of you watching, again, I'll be putting the links to Kevin and all of his contact information to get a hold of him if you wanna add some beautiful exotic trees, which I'm gonna do a tour of within his garden uh, momentarily in another video, which you'll see uploaded. But in the meantime, don't forget to like this if you've enjoyed um, this demonstration. Um, and don't forget to subscribe down below to be connected to all of our other educational gardening videos with Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.